Hey, Acryptizens. Tonight's stories. Survey says, Tokens less risky than gold or oil for UK investors. Bitcoin mined from waste. It's 10 p.m. Pacific time and the date is March 22nd, 2022. Welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm your host, Nick. The cover model for this podcast is Tex, and together we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. We bring you new stories on familiar topics. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. So how y'all like in Honduras these days? It looks like they might be the next nation to orange pill themselves. According to unconfirmed rumors, the president of Honduras, Xiomara Castro, is keenly interested in Bitcoin. And it's expected that they'll be making the announcement soon. Perhaps they saw El Salvador's double-digit improvement in GDP and got a bit jealous. I mean, it is known that Castro said El Salvador should not be the only one, quote, escaping dollar hegemony. As reported by sources, Castro also stressed Honduras's right to, quote, advance towards the first world. Now, before we get into tonight's stories, let's take a quick look at the markets. At the time of writing, the global crypto market cap is $1.91 trillion. That's up 2.1% on the day. The top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin up 2.81%, Ethereum up 2.07%, Tether, Binance Coin up 1.65%, and USDC. The global NFT market cap is just above $10.13 billion. That's off 5.32% in 24. So, the top five NFT collections in OpenSea by sales volume are Bored Apes up 18%, Mutant Apes up 7%, CryptoPunks down 17%, Clonex up 13%, and Azuki down 53%. Now, keep in mind, Some of these collections have very volatile prices, so do your own research. Survey. Tokens are less risky than gold or oil for UK investors. So what happened is they interviewed some 2,000 UK investors. One poll is the name of the company, and they interviewed them on behalf of Tokenize. And the results showed that there was interest in non-fungible tokens, or NFTs. 24% of the respondents showed interest. Some have interpreted it as, quote, a critical tipping point for token adoption. And it looks like there's growing interest for upending the Apple cart. It's a growing interest in new asset classes, and these new asset classes threaten to replace traditional finance. Responses reveal that some of this is driven by ease of use and an adolescent crypto market. 81% of responders chose tokens as the safer and more secure alternative. This was in comparison to traditional investments like oil and gold and real estate. Driven by a difficult climate for traditional investment vehicles, and this is because of the pandemic, low interest rates, and inflation. And that means that the time is right for tokens to take center charge. And like I said, 24% revealed interest in investments in tokens. Now, as you might expect, an increased interest in crypto will bring increased access. And this comes from a growing number of providers and exchanges. And these are providers and exchanges that absolutely intend to capitalize on demand. Now, 55% of the responding investors across the UK said influencer marketing via artists and musicians and collectors those all had some effect on their decision-making. 49% found that they like the ability to make their purchases right through app-based marketplaces. So that would be things like Rarible and OpenSea. And importantly, 41% of Londoners are ready to buy, use, or trade an NFT this year. Now, the bulk of people interested in trading NFTs were in the 18 to 24 age range. 46 fell in that range. 53% said that one important factor was the ability to invest using apps or online portals. Now, all that said, the importance of education in promoting crypto-based investments really showed itself. 
as some claim that this is a reason for regulated exchanges. The survey said, quote, when it comes to tokens, nearly half, or 47%, have yet to invest because they do not know enough about tokens, while 34% do not know an easy and safe way to invest. And I think that is exactly the kind of thing that led, like the Financial Conduct Authority. You know, they cracked down recently on Bitcoin ATMs. Now, people just don't fully recognize sometimes what they're investing in. And the research shows now women have lower exposure to tokens and NFTs compared to men. Neither men or women showed a preference for using online platforms to manage their NFTs. But if you remember correctly, we talked about this before. When they started their crackdown, the Financial Conduct Authority cited three key reasons for the sudden enforcement. Lack of regulatory structure, the high risk potential for fluctuating assets, and the importance of holding the principles established within the money laundering regulations. So that does seem to match up with the re results shown in the survey. Bitcoin mined from waste. So here we go. This miner stronghold digital mining. They're not hooked up to the U.S. National Energy Network at all. You know, they don't use the, the U.S. electrical grid. Instead, they use coal ash. So instead of draining and drawing from the normal electricity that folks like you and I use, we power our houses with it. This actually turns waste into money. So this company is based in, in Pennsylvania, and they have set up hundreds of supercomputers to run on coal ash. So think, think about this. They're using a waste product to capture lost value. That energy stored in coal ash would have been wasted, and now it's money. There's a lot of complaints about the amount of energy that gets used by blockchains like Bitcoin. You know, I've heard it uses more electricity per year than Finland. Honestly, I expect the traditional financial system uses far more. How much energy does it take to move around all these armored trucks to keep the banks powered? How much to run the computers and their security systems? Stronghold Digital Mining found an alternative way to generate electricity for its operations. They found a way to use the coal ash left behind by decades-old power plants. So here's how it works. SDM collects coal ash from a nearby mine in the Pennsylvania area. They process that ash, and then the byproduct goes into a boiler building. Then they burn that in the boiler building where it produces electricity. This is actually a huge environmental service because coal ash, it leaches its way into the groundwater. And from the groundwater, it pollutes waterways. It's full of heavy metals and is a huge carcinogen. Now, because of their efforts, Stronghold prevents certain amounts of coal ash from reaching the population of Pennsylvania. Think about that. Greg Beard is their chief executive officer. And he said, quote, the Bitcoin mining network itself is the largest decentralized computer network in the world, and it's power hungry. So co-locating Bitcoin mining and a power plant makes a lot of sense. Now, in addition, Bill Spence is the co-chairman for SDM, and he said mining is the perfect niche for crypto. Now, they are not the only ones to get in on this. Now, Canadian city North Vancouver said they were going to use released energy from Bitcoin mining. And that energy would be used for heating residential buildings. So Mint Green is a Bitcoin miner, and they're working with Lonsdale Energy Corporation. Now, in this initiative, digital boilers could prevent two, no, 20,000 tons of greenhouse gases from entering the atmosphere per megawatt. Now, that's compared to natural gas, which is considered to be clean. Karsten Vang is the CEO at Lonsdale Energy Corporation, and they believe this work is going to prove to be beneficial for this city's future and making that future more green. They said, quote, being partners with Mint Green on this project is very exciting for LEC in that it's an innovative and cost competitive project, and it reinforces the journey LEC is on to support the city's ambitious greenhouse gas reduction targets. And there are other examples of enterprising folks using what people would consider to be waste to make money. 
And that makes sense because back in the day, they made kerosene. They used that to heat people's houses. In the process of manufacturing kerosene, they had a waste product. For a long time, they didn't really know what to do with it because it was very reactive and it was very volatile. And that is a fact I think many of us are going to be thankful for because that waste product is gasoline, which has become one of the most valuable liquids on the planet. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. So let me ask you, what do you think? Is Honduras going to be the next one to orange pill themselves? Now, I'm not really sure because I think Malaysia is going to be in there as well. A senior Malaysian official said that the Southeast Asian country should adopt Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as legal tender. Zahidi Abedin is Malaysia's deputy minister of the communications and multimedia ministry. And he said, quote, we hope the government can allow this. Malaysian's communication and multimedia industry oversees the digital and broadcasting sectors, so it's not completely out of place for him to even think about it. So, you tell me what you think. Is it going to be Malaysia or is it going to be Honduras? Send me an email at crypto.overnighter at gmail.com. That's crypto.overnighter at gmail.com. Now, I am going to be on the road again tomorrow, Wednesday the 23rd, so there won't be a show on that night. And give crypto in five minutes a lesson. We're up to 34 educational podcasts and counting. That's five minutes to explain one concept in crypto. And until next time, may peace be.